Pepper, English Barley Wine, English Barley Wine with Brett, which we'll talk about Brett a little bit when we get there, and then we're going to end with the specialty cider. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do every time we judge a beer is we're going to read the style guideline. You would not believe how many people out there do not read or follow the style guidelines. There, During judging. It's yeah, and, and it's, not, it's not an epidemic, but it's more than should happen. So we're going to read the style guidelines out loud, make sure we understand what we're – and they're going to be open in front of us the entire time as we're tasting and talking. So why don't I start reading the American Wheat while somebody starts pouring the American Wheat? I think that is a good way to start. Matt, so, is, are, Matt are you ready for us yet? Are you ready? Okay. So, so Matt Robinson or Chris Bradley? Who's who's our first judge we guest? Alternate here, alternate. Here. All right. So, You're judging the wheat with us. This is Matt Robinson, everybody. Welcome. Aroma. We're, we're looking for a low to moderate grainy wheat or rye character. Some malty sweetness is acceptable. Esters can be moderate to young, to none, although should reflect American yeast strains. Clove and banana aromas common to German Hefeweizens are inappropriate. Hop aroma may be low to moderate and can have either a citrusy American or a spicy or floral noble hop character. Slight crisp sharpness is optional. No diacetyl. No diacetyl. Appearance, usually pale yellow to gold. Clarity may range from brilliant to hazy with yeast approximately approximating the German Hefeweizen style of beer. Big, long-lasting white head. Flavor, light to moderately strong grainy wheat or rye flavor which can linger into the finish. Rye versions are richer and spicier than wheat, may have a moderate malty sweetness, or finish quite dry. Low to moderate hot bitterness, which sometimes lasts into the finish. Low to moderate hot flavor. Citrusy, American, or spicy, floral, noble hops. Esters can be moderate to none, but should not take on a German Weissen character, like banana. No clove phenols are acceptable, although a light spiciness from wheat or rye is acceptable. It may have a lightly crisp or sharp finish. No diacetyl. Mouthfeel is medium light to medium body, medium high to high carbonation. May have a light alcohol warmth and stronger examples. Overall impression is refreshing wheat or rye beers that can display more hot character and less yeast character than their German cousins. Okay. So let's get a fourth cup. Vanessa is going to be tasting. She's not going to be judging. Sure. She's going to be tasting. So we'll pour her just a little bit. First thing we do is we look inside the bottle, make sure there's enough alcohol in there. Uh, <laughs> that's what we're doing, right? <laughs> Checking for alcohol. Now, we're actually just trying to make sure because you can tell a lot from looking at the bottle fill. If it's too close to the top, you may have some issues. If it's too far down, you may have some issues. This one's within, you know, expected range. The next thing we're going to do is open it and listen for the sound. Good sound. Got a good, good sound. Good sound. You know, that's what you want. What, what entry it, number oh. This is entry number five. Okay. Entry number five. Category. Uh, it's oh, uh, 60, this is a, 60 American This is a specialty ingredient? wheat, right? Oh, category. oh, yeah. This one has specialty. What's the specialty ingredient? Twenty uh, raspberries. Did they ah. enter it as a sixty or did they enter it as a specialty? Special for beer. Oh, okay, so but that's it's actually it's a different. Excellent. But you need the base stock because otherwise you don't know what it is. Well, okay. in specialty specifically, like the first sentence is no beer in this style is ever out of style. Right. <laughs> which <laughs> is kind of, which is kind of a cop out. Well, it's not. It's not a specialty. It's, it's a. He, oh, it's they, a oh, they want beer. fruit beer. Okay. So it's a fruit beer, which means it has to have the base style represented pretty yeah, well. Yeah, fruit beer is a little. And tough depending on how how much they specify in the base style. Okay, so so what did they put in here? Raspberries. Raspberries. Wait. So entry number so did five. you say specialty wheat? Yes. Okay. Well, no. I'm with you. It's, yeah, it's, it's a fruit beer. It's it's a wheat fruit beer. Yeah, that's fine. Fruit beer. <laughs> you guys just tell me what you want on the screen. I make it go there. Okay. You know, I mean, it, it's got a nice color to it. It's it's got some good foam coming out. I'd expect a little more carbonation out of a wheat beer, but it's decent. I mean, it's, it's yeah, all the, carbonated. Uh, so, you know, I'm filling all my. Uh, information here later but one thing is we will be writing as we're talking so you know one of us will try to pick up when the other ones are going but uh like i said uh the first thing i'm going to look at is the appearance but before you actually look at the beer because you can look at the beer for a long time you got to smell the beer first 
the smell goes away really fast. So you can you can't smell everything that's in there for a long time. You can only smell it for usually a few seconds since it comes out. You can shake the beer around and spill it on your scorecard like I usually do. <laughs> oh, um, I, I always do that. It's the only way to I judge. I think it's, it's it's so that they know it's their beer that you were judging <laughs> that you spilled on their score sheet. So I think that's just the natural way to Especially do it. Especially helpful in stouts. Okay. Whoa! That is fruity. Don't spoil it. I haven't tasted it yet. Okay, I won't spoil it. That is really freaking fruity. Wow! I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not gonna I'm not gonna spoil it. <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil it. Oh my god! <laughs> so it's got, it, you know, it's got a big fruit aroma. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's definitely raspberry. Is, I mean, is that the fruit aroma covering up diacetyl? No, no, I don't think so. Yeah, it's just yeah. lots of raspberry. Just lot, lot, lot of whole. Is it raspberry? I don't yeah. smell anything else other than the fruit. Yeah, it's. I get a little bit of grain, a little bit of sweet grain, but other than that, it's just. <sighs> you get fruit. grain in there? A little bit. Like think of if you're just smelling raspberry juice, and then think if you're smelling raspberry and beer. Oh there's, yeah, there's no yeah, the, yeah. The, the, okay. There is yeah. You're right. Yep. There's a little bit of grain in there. And, and see, this is why we have more than one person judging because sometimes people pick up on the subtle things that the other person won't. So I would have just said this is just a huge fruit aroma, and maybe I would have gone back a little later and tried to pick up some of the subtle things that come out when it warms up. But there's just a slight malt aroma. Uh, by the way, I'm not going to write a whole lot tonight just because uh, you know I figure I'll be talking. Everybody else will be writing quite a bit, um, and they if you want my info on this just watch the video and you can see which we'll post up on the cap and hair website um so the appearance is definitely very strong uh the color it adds some color from the raspberry the flavor i mean that is just a monstrous fruit flavor in there there's a lot of raspberry in there it, it yeah and it says that um with some fruits and specifically calls out raspberries it says that it allows for a range of fruit character and intensity in the aroma from subtle to aggressive and i <laughs> this would is definitely definitely, I'll definitely call this aggressive um when when the fruit actually goes away you can taste that slight bit of wheat malt in there yeah um i expect it actually from well, being a wheat beer i almost expect it to be a little cloudier well it's an american wheat which can be filtered so that's true it, yeah, it's kind of hard to pick out any flavor in there over that raspberry because there's a lot of raspberry in the subcategory. Is just such yeah, and it, it specifically wheat. says that the balance of fruit with the underlying beer is vital. And, and uh, I, I think what, I think that they just this tastes like raspberry juice. It, it tastes they could have said this was a raspberry light American lager, and we would have said this is a better beer. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would go there. Um, you know, true. you know, it, it's got, and that's kinda, that's what he's talking about with that statement in the fruit beer that you have to match it, you have to blend it with the underlying style. Well, the underlying style is a wheat, so you really expect some cloviness, maybe some. You don't have to in an American American wheat, but yeah, you don't. Clove. But you you would expect to have something in the range of some cloviness, oh, some banana. No clove. No, it's you no, can have cloves. No, you can't. It, it specifically, specifically says no clove. Specifically oh, my says bad. No okay. Clove. Well, sorry, I, I'm wrong with that. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you read the style <laughs> guidelines. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you can have some different flavors in there. You're though. allowed I mean, to have some roast. Definitely, would roast like, is good. You would definitely like to have some. <laughs> Sweetness from the malt. You really want sweetness from the malt in a wheat beer, period. I mean, and that's across all wheat styles, so don't give me any hell. Uh, <laughs> now, what types of uh, am I looking for then with the, the flavors you're going to get from the yeast in an American? You can get a clean American ale yeast, but you can also get yeah. some bubblegummy type flavors. Um, not from an American ale yeast, but from an American... Wheat yeast. Dude, how many you get some of those did you have? Good like lord. Like, yeah, yeah it, English, it, American wheat's going to be brewed at 1056. Same stuff as American ale. It's going to be just super neutral. Super clean. Which is, well, right. I just brewed that American rye with an American wheat yeast. And it definitely has, like, banana ish, as I would call it. I mean, you don't, you can call it whatever you want. To me, it's kind of like, uh, uh, you can get some spiciness from the wheat. Well, and it yeah. was rye that I actually made it with, so... Right. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, right. and... This, this has a light spice behind it. Yeah, you can you can taste yeah. a little bit of wheat in there. It's just a base style so light. Yeah, you have, you have I mean, to fight it really hard. You right. have to fight that raspberry really hard. And so, in this one right now, uh, we've spent a lot of time talking about it. Um, I feel like the aroma's lacking in, in several 
situations, but it's not, I mean, you get the fruit aroma, but it's not crazy. Um, the flavor is very dominant and, and very one-sided. You miss the you miss the cohesion of the two styles together, which apparently I'm reading completely incorrect. But I would like to go back and look at that some more. Well, it, it and says, see what it I'm says, talking about with the yeast here. It says that this thing the flavor should be noticeable and may range from subtle to aggressive. But then the next sentence says the balance of fruit with underlying beer is vital, and and that's actually that that's not really so much how you how you mix your ingredients. It's it's what you choose as your base style. Raspberry would be really good with a strong English ale like we were doing earlier, the raw winter warm. Okay, but so, raspberry it, it just kills the sweet. So by the way, uh, what I was saying here is you no, know, there are no clove phenols, but you can have the. German Weissen character of banana, which is what I'm talking about, and add levels up to moderate. So that's basically what I was saying. So that's that's what I describe as bubble gum sometimes, is that banana flavor. Oh, and masters. so you, you don't have to have it, so it doesn't have to be there. But what I'm saying is you would expect some sweetness from the wheat, maybe some banana. You'd expect something that would differentiate it as a wheat as opposed to whatever other style that you were looking for. I was totally wrong in a clove thing. Yeah, even in the aroma. Mouthfeel is, is, is fine. That's even in the good. aroma, it says fruit character should be pleasant and supportive, not artificial and inappropriately overpowering. Nor should have a do uh, proper harmonious balance of the featured fruit with the underlying beer style. I mean, they, they just it, it completely so kills it. where do you guys end up with? Um, I like it. Um, I mean, I didn't think that it was too killed by the raspberry. I mean, it, the, the American wheat is such a light beer in and of itself mm -hmm. uh, you the fact that we can taste any beer at all is testament it, it, it's, how it's pretty good yeah. in there um I'd, I'd drink more but i'm a fruit beer fanatic i got a six pack of great divide raspberry what is it it's a raspberry brown you're making this up as you go raspberry you don't brown. know what you're drinking <laughs> <laughs> okay well so you like the beer you know i mean this is good end up i've already got my points down so i'm at a 31 i'm at a 33 so I'm, uh, not, I'm at a 52. Wow, that's a lot. Well, it that's really, actually two really points likes more than are allowed. The scale is 0 to 50, by the way. And in general, you won't see anything less than a 10, and you won't see anything more than a 45. Yeah. Uh, and that's and everybody does their numbers a little differently. Unless you're drinking PBR, uh, and then I, it's a 46. Yeah. I feel like... Uh, I feel like I could go higher like with Bono's 33, but I, I, I don't I felt think, like I could go lower. So uh, I don't let, feel like I could get much higher than what, what you're at, Bono. So this is usually what we end up doing. We look at the beer. We're, we, we're trying to be within about five points of each other. If we're within five points, we're going to leave it, and we'll judge it for later if, if we have to change anything. Yeah, if we have so to right now to, we'll what's happening is uh, Matt's tallying up his totals. He's written some stuff on here. He knows that we're right, and he's trying to make his numbers look like ours. So, <laughs> so I'm going to uh, – I'll let these guys write some more, and – I will write C video on all of my stuff. <laughs> um, I gave him a 35. Right, yeah, 35, so 31, 33. That, that's um, pretty good points. Ness, do you Overall, still have any of that beer? Do, do you want to read our comments? Oh, no, you're done. I was going to see if you want to read our comments while you drink it. but You're, you're listening to us. You, you know what's being said. Tasted like raspberry Budweiser. That's exactly what yeah, I was saying. That, I and that, that, he he I said light that American would have lager. Been a lot which better is Budweiser. as a light American yeah, lager. Yeah, that, that's a very good call, oh, Ness. Even <laughs> Was a lot. I was expecting more. Um, no, I was glad that it didn't overpower the beer taste. I, I okay. think they went together pretty well. I mean, it's not. Well, you're wrong. I thought it was pretty good too. Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I thought I thought it was a good beer. Uh, like I said, I just I didn't get the wheat character. I didn't, I didn't think it was terrible. I just yeah, thought it was I like. I want to read that first sentence. It says absolutely no clove or banana. Is inappropriate. That's <laughs> read the first paragraph. Some dissent from the crowd. The, read the first paragraph. <laughs> where I just read on what was aroma. going. Read on the aroma. Well, on the aroma, that's fine, but in the flavor, you should still be able to taste some banana. Right. Yeah. When it says esters can be moderate to none, should but should not take on a German Weizen character. Excuse me, I did read that wrong. It should, <laughs> but you should have you should be able to have fruity esters. Yes. And and that's where just not banana and cloves. Just but not banana and cloves. Okay. Well, there it is. Well, what I was looking for in there, I guess I'm mistaking. And this is this is what I've learned a lot about uh, with judging is that one person's perception of a certain particular flavor is not always what is written right, look, on there and what you're talking about. Let's, let's so mark these cups you know, and move on. What I'm talking about in my in the beer let's that I made please. that has bubblegum flavors. Apparently, bubblegum has nothing to do with banana or cloves, like I always thought it did. 
because that was pretty basic beer, and it should have, right. it, and that's just fruity esters. All right, ESB, okay, which is short for extra special bitter. Um, hop aroma is moderately high to moderately low, and can use any variety of hops. Although UK hops are most traditional, medium to mo medium high malt aroma, often with a low to moderately strong caramel component. Although this character will be more subtle in paler versions. Medium low to medium high fruity esters, generally no diacetyl, although very low levels are allowed. May have light secondary notes of sulfur and or alcohol in some examples. Appearance is golden to deep copper, good to brilliant clarity, low to moderate white to off-white head. A low head is acceptable when carbonation is also low. Flavor is medium high to medium bitterness with supporting malt flavors evident. Normally have a moderately low to somewhat strong caramely malt sweetness. You can push this out of your way. I don't care. Okay. Um, high, hop flavor moderate to moderately high. Any variety, although earthy, resiny, and or floral UK hops are most traditional. Hop bitterness and flavor should be noticeable, but should not totally dominate malt flavors. May have low levels of secondary malt flavors, e.g. nutty or biscuity, adding complexity. Moderately low to fruity high esters. High fruity esters, optionally may have low amounts of alcohol and up to a moderate minerally sulfury flavor. Medium to dry to dry finish, particularly if sulfate water is used. Generally, no diacetyl, although very low levels are allowed. Mouthfeel, medium light to medium full body, low to moderate carbonation, although bottled commercial versions will be higher. Stronger versions may have a slight alcohol warmth, but this character should not be too high. Overall impression, an average strength to moderately strong English ale. The balance may be fairly even between malt and hops to somewhat bitter. Drinkability is a critical component, component of this style. Emphasis is still on the bittering hop addition as opposed to the aggressive middle and late hopping seen in American ales. A rather broad style that allows for considerable interpretation by the brewer. Okay, uh, basically... This is an English style beer with, you know, English style everything. And there can be a range of maltiness and a range of bitterness. Um, in general, this needs to be a pretty balanced beer, though. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll just see how this one rolls. Again, look at the bottom fill. Bottle fill is actually perfect on this one. It's got a nice pop when you open the top. Yeah, that's I, exactly what I, I, I am a harsh judge, by the way. So, you know, granted, I may have said some things He's that were incorrect to style, but um, basically, if everybody else is given a 35 at this table, I'm probably going to give you a 31. And I do the same thing when I'm judging what, my own beers. It's just the way it works. This? this is 8C. I am a dick. <laughs> okay. We're doing this is 8C. Wow. So, I get a little bit of peppery, um, a yeah. little bit of fruity. Something, is that floral or perfuming? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. That could be from the hops. Yep. And so those, those things we just mentioned, the peppery and the perfumey can be floral, can be from hops, and then the fruity is probably from the yeast. And, and um, these, these are all acceptable. And, and remember, it, the, 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 aroma, the, aroma, the aroma component says a hop aroma moderately high to moderately low. I mean, I, I think this is probably on the high end of the range, yeah, but, but it, it's definitely within range. I mean, it's not overpowering. No, certainly not. It, it's, I don't get much as far as the malt goes. No. I mean, you smell the malt. It's there, yeah. It's in the background, but you don't, I mean, it, you don't, yeah, you don't get, you don't have to have more. So, it, you would expect a little more with that big of a hop. Yeah. That's kind of what this style is all about, is is meeting that, uh, meeting that balance, right? I mean, yeah. Medium to medium high. Yeah. The, the lawyer is going to go to town on this, I think. She, she's going to really get into beer judging. And, uh, you know, just, just looking at it, it, I mean, looks... Is that chill now? No, that wouldn't be chill. There's a, there's a slight cloudy, haze to yeah. it. It's a little cloudy. Um, so, you know, the appearance is going to get docked a little bit for that. Um, and, and, guys, remember, appearance is only three points. So, um, 
Appearance is three points, but carbonation yeah. is like eighty. Yeah, carbon. carbon if you don't have a, but, but there's carbonated in those three points, there's clarity, oh. there's color, there's the head retention, the head color, the head texture. Right. There's like ten different things that go into appearance. Right. Yep. Yeah. It's very little. And yeah, so it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, you you know, for this to be a little bit cloudy and going like this, you know, yeah. it's either going to be a two or a three. I mean, the it's close enough. Yeah, it's right on the style. So depends on. It de really it depends on how good the beer is, yeah. uh, and when you taste it, there, there's uh, there's some issues there. Um, it's uh, not, not a whole lot of head to it, but it sure lasts, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful wonderful head there, but it's this is a very hoppy beer. Uh, it's very hop forward beer, which bitterness is allowed in this style, but um, flavor flavor shouldn't be in there. The, I mean, there should be a, there can be a little bit, but sure. especially with that the kind of aroma and, we got. You know, we'll go back through and look at it, but medium to medium or medium high to medium bitterness, definite there. Uh, but it says with supporting malt flavors evident, and this is completely lacking that supporting malt that would come along with a big hoppy version of this beer. Um, and this is this is a it's on the just light. Yeah. Yeah. The just light all the way around. Light all the way around, except for the hop flavor. Yeah. And and you can you can be light in this style if, if you've got a, an assertive bitterness behind it. But uh, that assertive bitterness just isn't there. And the, I think it was it almost tastes like the hops were just too much late hop addition, right? Like maybe the flavor hops were more than the, no, yeah, uh, the I mean, bitterness. So basically, less boil hops, more yeah. flavor hops. Uh, you know, and we're totally speculating from here. We don't really know what the brewer did or what they're trying to accomplish. But what we're saying here is we need more malt backbone for this much flavor of hop. Yeah. And you know, and that's that's to a detriment of the, of this beer. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's actually not a bad beer. Uh, just like the first one, I like the first beer too. Um, I think the first beer was a little closer to style than this beer. Um, but it's just a big flavor right up front. You, you, there is some bitterness in the back, and there is some malt in the back, but it just just taken over. Uh, by it, it, in, in, an, in an ESB, you need balance. You you either need balance, or you need bitter, or you need bitterness to really be assertive. And and they're just. It's it's like the flavors were really kind of dominating on this. Yeah, and this flavor is allowed to be just like everything. Flavor is allowed to be moderate to moderately high, but 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 it, that's the only thing that's moderately high in this. Everything else is low. Yeah, hop flavor is allowed to be moderately high, but then you go to your overall overall impression, and and balance has to be even sure. to bitter. Sure. And, and so basically, what this is telling us is, you could you could do two things with this beer. You could take the hop flavor down and enter it as maybe a standard bitter. Or enter it as a, a you know, just a pale ale. Maybe a pale ale. Yeah, just a straight English pale yeah. ale. Yeah, this would be a really good English pale ale. It'd be better that way. And so you could do that, or you could actually increase the the entire beer, and leave the flavor hops alone, and it would balance out towards the style because it needs a little more bitterness and needs needs a little more malt to meet this style. Um, you know, mouth. What, what, what did you say about the color? Uh, this is a this is a nice color. Copper orange. Nice color. Yeah, I like it. Color. Slight. The only knock I can put on the appearance is a slight haze. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's yeah. Other than that, it's it's got a it's a great looking beer. So, uh, you know, I feel like I'm being a little rude there. I'm gonna change this one up. Get did you draw a picture of your middle finger? That's that's not cool. I did. I did. I apologize. Cool. So that's one uh, point. You know, th this beer is about where it needs to be on my score sheet now. Um, I like it. I'm good. I, once again, see video. Um, www. Oh wait, no, I don't really need to do that. Um, we'll just put it on the cabin hair site, so it'll be fine. Um, but. I'll let you guys tally it up, and I'll go ahead and discuss. So basically what, what we're finding out here is this beer is not a beer. It's actually a very drinkable beer. Just like the first one, I would finish that beer if I had it at a you know at a bar, and I would not send it back and think twice. Uh, it, it's good beer. I'd be happy with my purchase. But when you're actually drinking that beer and you're, you want to order a specific style, this one doesn't quite hit this style. And it's closer to a couple of other styles. It's closer yeah. to uh, an English pale ale, but 
Not quite. Um, yes, sir, Matt. Uh, the ESB is the English family. Well, it can like, be. Like a, well, like, are you talking about like a, like a ordinary bitter or special? Well, that's what I, I was saying, yeah. Okay, the, like the, the, well, they're all pale ales. Right. Like the, the pale ale is a bottled oh, version yes. of an ESB. But basically, if you, you'd have to make the beer more well-rounded to get into any category. It's, and you can do so by decreasing the overall hop flavor or by increasing the bitterness in the malt. I think it's just missing a lot of body. It's missing the body. Yeah. Uh, but I think if, if you just added body to this, you'd be missing the bitterness. Yeah, yeah. It's so, a little, little and everything. So, you know, and, and maybe that's what it, maybe it just came out with a more flavorful hop than they anticipated. So they got good utilization out of the flavor. And so they said, well, the flavor is now too big and I'm going to enter it as a ESB instead of a standard bitter. Maybe they were shooting for the everything in a standard bitter. So, you know, that, that's where it is. It's kind of a nice finish. Yeah, it's a good beer. Mm, good mouthfeel. Yeah. Good creaminess. I end up with 29. 30. Wow. <laughs> just we, just off the cuff, I was thinking like 33, 34. But we, we you're fine cheated. there. Oh, we, we did. did. Yeah. We, um, we, we copied each other's papers. We oh. electrolyse certifiable promulgated that? ESP. Yeah, no, That's what it stands for, right? <laughs> certified. Oh. I was lower than I expected to be. I was 30. He doesn't add very well either, so he's, he's actually higher than a 30, but we'll. I'm actually at a 77. 29. So 29, 30, 30. Basically, everybody said that there's really nothing wrong with this beer. There's no flaws in it. It just, just doesn't meet style. 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 Yep. Mm-hmm. And if, right. if you entered this as a specialty beer where you were trying to make some sort of a specialty that focused on uh, hop flavor but English characteristics, you'd have to rate this in the high 30s, right? Yeah, I uh-huh. hope so. Yeah. So next we're doing a Munich Dunkel. Sure. All right. I put that sheet somewhere. Vanessa, that's gonna be four B. Thank you, sir. B is in bitch slap. Hey, throw that pimple. So the next time we do this, Matt's got to get a green man suit. What am I doing, Matt? So the next time we do this, we got to get Matt a green man suit so he can pop in and put up glasses and stuff without being seen. Yeah. It's a little hard to hear you, Richard, uh, with uh, all the noise and banging around that's going on in here. So, <laughs> Whoa! really funny. <laughs> but uh, okay, you assume correctly. Munich Dunkel. Um, Munich Dunkel is aroma, rich Munich malt sweetness, light bread crusts, and sometimes toast. Hints of chocolate, nuts, <laughs> caramel, and/or toffee are also acceptable. There are no fruity esters or diacetyl. That should be detected, but a slight noble hop aroma is acceptable. So there's an appearance that's deep copper to dark brown, often with a red or garnet tint. Creamy, light to medium tan head, usually clear, although murky, unfiltered versions do exist. The flavor is dominated by the rich and complex flavor of the Munich malt, usually with melanoidins reminiscent of bread crusts. The taste can be moderately sweet, although it should not be overwhelming or cloying. Mild caramel, chocolate toast, or nuttiness may be present. Burnt or bitter flavors from roasted malts are inappropriate, as are the pronounced caramel flavors from the crystal malt. Hot bitterness is moderately low but perceptible, with the balance tipped forward uh, or firmly towards maltiness. What about the tip? Towards firmly malty. Noble hop flavor is low to none. Tip should be firm. Uh, After taste (laughs) remains malty. Although the hop bitterness may become more apparent than the medium dry finish. Clean lager character with no fruity esters or diacetyl. The mouthfeel is medium to medium full. That's yours. It's clean. Don't talk to me. Okay. And uh, it should never be heavy or cloying. Moderate carbonation may have a light astringency and slight alcohol warming. Uh, Overall impressions characterized by depth and complexity of the Munich malt and accompanying melanoidins. Rich Munich flavors but not as intense as a Bach or roasted as a Schwartz beer. Okay? So basically this is going to be, beer. it's going to have some roastedness to it, but it's going to be a big, bready beer. Uh, and br- it, this is liquid bread. Whenever anybody says this beer should taste like liquid bread, they're talking about a Munich dunk. So let's see. Open it up. How's she sound? Oh, sounds pretty good. 
Oh, I'm, that? oh I'm sorry. I didn't. Yeah, she yeah, she it sounded sorry. pretty good. She moaned a little bit. She was good. Okay. Ness, you want to come up here and get yours? I know. I'll just pour you a little bit. Is that is it? Has it got a good firm tip? It's, it's got a good tip. It's firm? um, you know, it's got a nice color. It really, it really does. does, actually. Uh, I, I know that you're saying that to be a wise ass, but it does have a really nice color. Okay. It's a little dark, but. Uh, that's about right, though. Yep. Yeah. The appearance, deep copper to dark brown, I'd say it's right on the money. And I know, trust me. <laughs> so, I smell, uh, I smell chocolate malt. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. yeah, chocolate's allowed, though. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Hints of yeah. chocolate. Well, it says hint, hints of chocolate. So and now we have to get into the discussion. Is that a hint? <laughs> I, well, we'll only get into that discussion if this is off by a point from, from being the leader. So. I would say chocolate kind of leads the way. Yeah. A little bit of roast. But definitely, There's some roast it's in definitely sure. nutty. Yeah, there's some nutty in there. I get yeah. big time, big time nutty. And, you know, that can be pecan, that can be almond, that can be peanut. There's a lot of different nuts out there. <laughs> I'm getting what, a lot of filbert. What, what, are, what, what, are your, what, what are your favorite nuts? Oh, I everyone, try not to Everyone hates the Brazil nuts. They're high in phytic acid. <laughs> I spilled nuttiness wrong. <laughs> These nuts. <laughs> Bono likes Brazil nuts. <laughs> Okay. Um, All right. So I think the chocolate kind of goes away a little bit, by the way. Yeah, it does. That's yeah, it your, does. The aroma, that was the first thing. Along with the rest of the aroma. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, overall, I'm, I'm happy with the aroma. Good dark copper brown color. That's got some... Um, it's got some bread to it. And it's definitely, it's definitely a malt forward beer when you're tasting it. Um, no, that's not bad. But I would say it, it's it's hitting heavier on the roast, just like you got in the aroma. Uh, the roast comes through evidently in the beer. It's I'm a little little heavy on the roast. If Carl King was watching now, he'd probably be he'd freaking out. Yeah, ro ro the roast window. is not a, a, yeah a burnt or bitter flavors from roasted malt are inappropriate. It's not burnt or bitter. But it's not no. burnt or bitter. Yeah, it's just um, roasted. Yeah, you know, there's some definite melanoidin in there. Definite roast. I, I think the hop and the malt balance is pretty much spot on. It's a real is a really nice balance. Yeah. It, you know, it's definitely towards the sweet side. Like it's supposed to be. Yeah. Like it's supposed to be. I mean, you, you taste, there is some hop bitterness to balance it, but, um, you know, this is supposed to be a malt forward style. Um, yeah, I mean, just tasting it, you know, it's it's saying that the rich meaty flavor is this not is, as intense really as a Bach or as roasted as a Schwarz beer. I mean, yeah, you're allowed to have some of these roasted flavors. Uh, it's... I don't think you're supposed to have as much as is in this, my personal perception, but I'm going to go through reading through because that's something you do. You have your personal preconceived notions, as you saw in my first review, and that sometimes you have those things that, although what you're thinking is not necessarily what's on that paper, it may be totally wrong. So you're, you've got to go through and read that and make sure you're actually applying the right style to the right beer because sometimes you just get confused and you know you get caught up in things and you can have so. You know, I'm going to go back through and I'm going to read the flavor, make sure you know, it's dominated by the rich, uh, complex flavor of the Munich, melanoidins. It's kind of heavy. I like that. Taste can be moderately sweet. Shouldn't be cloying. I think it's, it's a, I think it is definitely moderately sweet. I would say maybe yeah. even a little more than moderately sweet. I would say it's... It, it's definitely got that firm de dexterous feel to it that they're looking for with mild caramel it, it's, chocolate it's toast pushing, or nutty it heavy, says but it's mild caramel chocolate toast or nuttiness may be present so i get a little bit of toast i get more than a mild amount of chocolate but not enough to where i'm going to kick this thing in the in the butt for it right yeah the, the chocolate it's there but it kind of melds in with the other roast malts and it, it good makes that nutty flavor that that we're getting mm -hmm. it, it, it finishes real nutty it does 
it starts out chocolate and finishes really nutty. And I think, you know, that's it, part because the it's a good underlying bitterness in there. Um, so pretty good beer. What number was this? Uh, number two? Number two. Number two. Number one. Number two. <laughs> Too much uh, scrubs for Matt. <laughs> you too. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Yeah, don't don't tell us about it. We were really looking for flaws in this beer, and yeah, we, we really couldn't find any. No, this is a great beer. Uh, it, it, it pushes the boundaries just enough to be interesting without being... <laughs> All right, where did everybody end up at? I, I got mine. I can't add that fast. I gave it 39. That was 38. Good. That was a good one. Uh, you know, I think that those things we were looking for are because we were missing something inherent from this beer. You know what I'm saying? Like normally when you taste that fantastic forties beer, you yeah. go, Oh, that's fantastic forties beer. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and we were, we knew it wasn't a fantastic forties beer. So right. we were trying to find out why. I'm at 39. Is it, is it 39? 30, I, I gave it a 39. We were right there. Oh, that, that's a really good beer. I like it. Well, I'm glad I came in for that one. Yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> See oh, I video. Face my well, you better hurry. <laughs> this is this is internet television. There's no time. The BJCP for, for would revoke my license for writing C video on my score sheet. By the way, <laughs> yeah, isn't there something in there about how you're not supposed to have public judgings or something? I have no oh, idea. Oh, look at the top. It says James this Land. Is a, this is not a BJCP <laughs> sanctioned event. Yeah, I tried <laughs> no. to. I tried to definitely get, uh, you know, I took the BJCP test twice now so that I can get high enough to where I can pitch a bitch on the BJCP about all the things that they do that are stupid. And I'm high enough now whether, well, that was probably coming out wrong. I'm not high. Whoa, I am. Really not high. <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> all right, Chris, you're up. Hey, and drink up. Next, our next oh. category is 12B. All right, now we're getting into the big beers. So, Again, these are the big oh, boys. Something we can discuss. Rogi. Welcome back, Chris. Welcome back. Mr. Robust Porter. Mr. Ro Ryan. Ro Ryan. Robust Porter. What's up? Name on it. Oh, I'm sorry. Can't hear it. You can give What's it. What's the next I number? I put my name on there. I got a pen. I know it's probably on uh, Next one is 12B. It's B-O-N-E. The R silent. <laughs> Actually, it's it, it's <laughs> <laughs> the best was the delayed response by Matt. Nope. That's One, that's, Porter, that's that, funny. That was a total joke grenade. <laughs> <laughs> All right, aroma, roasty aroma, often with a lightly burnt black malt character, should be noticeable and may be moderately strong. Optionally, may also show some additional malt character and support, such as grainy, bready, toffee like. Caramely chocolate, coffee, rich and or sweet. Hop aroma is low to high. Uh, U.S. or U.K. varieties. Some American versions may be dry hopped. Fruity esters are moderate to none. Diacetyl is low to none. Appearance is medium brown to very dark brown, often with ruby or garnet-like highlights. Can approach black in color. Clarity may be difficult to discern in such a dark beer, but when not opaque, will be clear particularly when held up to light. Full tan-colored head with moderately good head retention. Flavor is moderately strong malt flavor. It usually features a lightly burnt black malt character and sometimes chocolate and or coffee flavors with a bit of roasty dryness in the finish. Overall, fin overall flavor may finish from dry to medium sweet depending on grist composition, hop bittering level, and attenuation. May have a sharp character from dark roasted grains, although should not be overly acrid, burnt, or harsh. Medium to high bitterness, which can be accentuated by the roasted malt. Hop flavor can vary from low to moderately high, U.S. or U.K. varieties, and balances the roasted malt flavors. Diacetyl is low to none. Fruity esters, moderate to none. Mouthfeel is medium to medium full body, moderately low to moderately high carbonation. Stronger versions... May have a slight astringency from roasted grains, though this song. Overall impression, a substantial multi-dark ale with 
full roasty. Beer, please. I love beer. So basically, the difference between the last beer we just tried, where chocolate wasn't really supposed to be a big flavor, it was there, but it wasn't it wasn't huge. This is supposed to have the further guns of chocolate. You're supposed to have roasted flavors. And big is, roasted flavors. Is, is this the, one of these has coffee in it, Matt? Is this the one that has coffee, or, or is it Matt. the Matt. 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 This one has coffee, or Matt. is it the Baltic? Uh, this is going to be the coffee one. Yes, this has coffee. Uh, okay, so this yeah. is a robot porter with coffee. <laughs> so, technically, what style category are we entering this as, Matt? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I'm sorry, is there a question? No, yes. <laughs> What's up? You're right there, Panama Red. Yeah. <laughs> what is the question? Uh, we're waiting is on it, is you to tell us what it's about. Is it entered as a or is it entered as a specialty? Well, <clears throat> it is special. 21A, but it says herb, spice, herb, vegetable. So coffee is. Well, you didn't tell us that one. So. No, you didn't. No. I told Kyle in the beginning. No, you told me it was a robust porter, and later on you mentioned that it had coffee. So we decided that we were going to go ahead and... Uh, do a robust porter. Do a robust porter. <laughs> Something going on here that we don't know? No. Wait, so what are we calling it? What is this? 21A Spice Herb Vegetable. Do not no mess with that. That's No, what... Kyle puts that on his baby, and whenever she's doing something he doesn't like, he presses it and zaps her. It's a mini taser. I need one of those. And she goes, don't take me in. <laughs> he actually taught her to say that. Just, uh, don't take me, Dad. <laughs> don't taser me, Dad. All right, let's, let's open this damn beer before this gets retarded. So uh, this is a spiced okay. herb vegetable? Yeah, this is slightly low fill. What do we call this beer? They ever oh, say that you can get knocked down for low fill. Hey, Kyle. They just uh, say to I, I, I just knocked yeah, them, it, I just knocked them ten points. It's it's got low fill. You just have to, and th they actually adjusted this later on in there to where it's just a check mark. You know, so I guess if you don't have a check mark, that means ah, you didn't have appropriate fill. Okay, you didn't. So there, it if you don't check it. On it. Yeah. Now what is your low fill? So what was that, Rich? I was asking, uh, what are we calling this? I've still got it as Robust Porter. Robust 21A Porter Spice Herb Vegetable, yeah. Spice really? Spiced Herb Vegetable? It's fine with what you or, got. Robust okay. Porter with coffee. Or super light one for Vanessa. Okay. There you go. Is that enough for you, Ness? A little more, a little more. Shoot, shoot. What are you guys doing over there? I just, I just don't want to overload you. Jones. All right. Small head. Small head's all right in this, right? Light tan. Big coffee flavor. Or aroma, excuse me, flavor. I smell well, it and taste tasting both it, with my nose. Tasting it through your nose. Uh, these guys are watching right. viral internet videos. <laughs> yeah, it's on TV. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, you get a giant, yeah, the coffee, giant coffee in there, and it's very pleasant, though. Well, and, and there might be some roasted malt in there too, but it, it's just blending in with the coffee, like it's tough to. No, I, I don't get. I'm just listening. I mean, try to smell. And compliment on every little thing you get, like Bono says. He may get a little bit of roasted character behind the coffee. Okay, and that's possible. I don't necessarily get it right now, but... Well, I'm, I'm saying that it might be there, but you can't smell it because it'll, it'll, it will could tend to blend with the coffee. <laughs> What's going on over here? They're having a dance party. Yep. That bathroom looks like a yes. monster suit. <laughs> And another one rides a bus in that Weird Al's version. Okay. So I, I just, I smell and smell and smell, and all I'm getting is coffee. So I'm going to go ahead and do the taste part. It's not acidic, but it taste like it. Wow. Coffee is huge in this. Yeah. I mean, just huge in the flavor. 
It's got. Uh, they might have put too much coffee in. It, it's an acrid bitterness from the coffee. The, the coffee loving lawyer is definitely loving this beer. Hey, she she might she might finish there? off the wounded soldier for us. Playing soccer with the car boys. It's cool. <laughs> I, like, I, I do like the bitterness though. The one I'm thinking the, about today. No. <laughs> so, did you hear that, boys? You all lose. The, the coffee robust porter wins. That is who Vanessa is taking home with her. Uh, did, wait, did y'all? Who made these? Club members. No, no, none no, of no. none of us here. He, he, he's yeah. he's I, saying I, that I of all the people chocolate. that could go home with you tonight, it's going to be the coffee porter. I taste more chocolate than I got in the smell. But I don't I, I don't know if it's coming from the coffee or if it's coming from the robust porter, but it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, so I get a big roasty chocolatey flavor. Uh, it's actually very, very malt forward, which makes you think that it was a pretty substantial beer to begin with, like it should be for robust porter. Um uh, let's see, uh, the bit of dry roastiness in the finish. You, you know, we're kind of looking at the robust porter, but in the end, we really need to get that the robust porter and the yeah, coffee The robust are porter's got to be there, and, and it's got to be met blending with the coffee flavors. And I feel like the balance is a little bit towards the coffee. I, it's I'd it's a lot towards the coffee. Um, it's, it's a good beer, you know. You know, I, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and score it, and we've talked about it quite a bit, substantially. A heavy mouthfeel, which, you know, pretty pretty substantial mouthfeel. It's lingering flavors, so there's enough carbonation there, but it doesn't really lift any of the flavors off your, your tongue, so you can tell it's, it's a big, heavy beer. Um, so we've got mouthfeels medium to medium full body. It's definitely medium full. I wouldn't say it's it's as big as a barley wine, so it's it's really good there. Moderately low to moderately high carbonations right in there. You know they they done really good with the mouth feels right where you'd want it to be. Um, I need to make sure we didn't just lose Richard. Are you still there, Rich? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, I just had an error message just randomly pop up, but apparently everything's okay. <laughs> Looks fine to me. Um, Distraught. Okay. <laughs> so the aroma. I'm thinking. This. Parents, I'm going to give it this. The flavor, I'm going to give it this. The mouth mm. feels here. The overall impressions here. All right. So. Yeah, I think that's where it needs to be for me. All right. I'm happy with where I'm at. And as soon as these guys are, are where they want to be at, uh, and this is something else to discuss about score sheets. Score sheets have five categories, which is aroma, appearance, flavor, mouthfeel, and overall impression. And they have varied amounts of points. So aroma is worth 12. The appearance is worth 3. Um, the flavor is worth 20, which is, of course, a big thing. The mouthfeel is worth 5, and the overall impression is worth 10. So some people taste a beer and they say, okay, this is a 35. You know, they, they know they're, and they try to make their numbers end up matching and in general, you can do that. If you know your overall number, you can make the those the ones that uh, match because you're pretty much right on that. Now, other people like me, I add up all of mine individually. I rank everything individually, and I add them up at the end. Most of the time, that works for me, and things fall where they need to fall. Because right now, I know where this beer should have fallen according to what I've judged thus far, and, you know... So I'm looking at it from that perspective, and that's where my numbers hit. So I'm 30. I'm at 33. 34. So that's where we're at. This beer, to me, was a little better than the raspberry beer as far as uh, it complemented better with the base style, but I think it's still overpowered the base style. Yeah. Slightly. Yeah. But I think the selection of coffee with porter is, is a better selection than, than raspberry with American wheat. Oh, raspberry with American wheat's fine, but that, that is such a hard, hard fruit for people to get. Yeah, a raspberry <laughs> is so fermentable, it generally ferments out. So people try to overdo it so they can get it to, to the flavor there. And every time I've had a raspberry beer, you can either not taste the raspberry or it's, or it's just ridiculous. killer. killer All right, so next we've got Baltic Porter. You want to read this one? I do. I want to read this one. I, I know you would. I know you would. <laughs> Ness, do you want to reuse your cups, by the way, since you're not, like, judging? All right. 
Go ahead, and, go ahead and bring me your coach. 1950s television guy should read this. Baltic Border. Aromas rich in malty sweetness, often containing caramel toffee, nutty to deep toast, and or licorice notes. Complex alcohol and ester profile of moderate strength, and reminiscent of plums, prunes, raisins, cherries, or currants, occasionally with a Venice port-like quality. Some darker malt character that is deep chocolate, coffee, or molasses, but never burnt. No hops, no sourness, very smooth. The appearance is deep reddish copper to opaque dark brown, not black. Thick, persistent, tan-colored head. Clear, although darker versions can be opaque. Flavor, uh, as with aroma, has a rich malty sweetness with a complex blend of deep malt, deep, or deep malt dried fruit esters and alcohol. Fruit arresters. They should have plenty of fruit arresters. Has a prominent yet smooth Schwartz beer-like roasted flavor that stops short of burnt. Mouth filling and very smooth, clean lager character, no diacetyl. Start sweet, but darker malts flavors quickly dominate and persist through the finish. Just a touch of dry with a hint of roast coffee or licorice in the finish. Malt can have a caramel toffee, nutty molasses, and or licorice complexity. Light hints of black currant and dark fruits. Medium low to medium bitterness from malt and hops and just to provide a balance. Hop flavor from sp slightly spicy hops, lubulin or saz type ranges from none to medium low. Mouthfeel, generally quite full bodied and smooth. And a well aged alcohol warmth, although rarer lower gravity Carnegie style versions will have a medium body and less warmth. Medium to medium high carbonation, making it seem even more mouth filling. Not heavy on the tongue due to carbonation level, most versions <laughs> are in the 7 to 8.5% alcohol by volume range. Overall impression is a Baltic porter, often has the malt flavors reminiscent of an English brown porter, and the restrained roast of a Schwartz beer, but with a higher original gravity and alcohol content than either. Very complex, with multi-layered flavors. Okay. I'm going to read one of these, like the mama from Adam Sandler's Do It For Your Mama sketch. I thought you were going to read it like... Rich malty sweetness often contained... I thought that was the new girl in his new movie. Yeah, that is, actually. He had, <laughs> he, yeah, Vanessa, he uses that voice for in the new movie. You just sounded like Kyle's mom, actually. Rich <laughs> malty flavors! <laughs> uh, oh, you've okay, just been I'll kicked out of this. Are we talking about right. that part, Kyle? Go on with your voice. Big Cadman! Big, 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 big. Oh, whoa! Ho, ho. There's a lot, of, a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> we'll, we'll let Maybe overcarbonated. Take the boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. No, thank you, sir. No, thank you, sir. Okay. Amazing. You're welcome. Hmm. 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 Getting a lot of the licorice. Well, that's the chat room, so a lot of people are leaving. They've watched their beer, probably, and they're like, oh, my beer didn't do good, or my beer did good, and they're leaving. Ah, that makes sense. Um, well, now they're uh, gone. God, beer number one was horrible. Right off the bat, I get fruity esters. Yeah, there's fruit in there. And that's that's the bubble gum I'm talking about. So, okay, yeah. there, there's, what you, there's what we were talking about earlier, what I was messing up in and was trying to describe as bubble gum. Which isn't there's allowed. Like, there's like some licorice too. It's just yeah, yes. Yeah, there's like dark right? fruits in there. We'll, we'll claim that. You can try some of my beer in there, dicks. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fruity esters. <laughs> I know what those are. <laughs> sweet, sweet affirmation. <laughs> you sure there's no banana and clove in there? Are you sure you want to bite my ass? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back onto this beer. It's big fruity. That's that's not good. So that's gonna ding some points right off from right off the bat. It's, it's dark fruits, which well, it says yeah. No, but it should not have it should not have a yeast based fruity aroma, which no. this does. It, Mine yeah, is port like quality. See, I get I get like currants and licorice. I don't think you do. <laughs> I, I yeah, I, I get like prunes and licorice, which, which are acceptable. But when you taste it, you get something more like that for sure. But it, yeah. It, 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 Complex alcohol and ester profile of moderate strength. I, I feel like this is overpowering a little bit. I, I mean, the yeah, the alcohol's there. That's the, okay. The alcohol's the, okay to smell. The the fla the aroma profile is, is good. I think it's just a little too overpowering. Oh, good lord. Oh my God, that was 
He threw it on the ground. Drunk? <laughs> How the hell am okay. I drunkard in so, here? This doesn't mention that it's not supposed to have fruity esters, right? I mean, it, no, it, yeah, it, it, so, it, it specifically okay. says it's supposed to have fruity esters. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm it's okay. It's supposed to have an ester profile of moderate strength. I think this is a little too strong, but that profile is good. The profile is great. Yeah, if, if you're going to be characterizing these fruity esters, they're going to be more, like you said, prunes. Right, but, but it's dates -ish see, the, type. the first words are rich, malty sweetness. And so that, that should tell you that it should be malt forward with, right. with, with fruity esters in the back. And it, this is kind of reversed. Yeah, I, 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 think, I don't think it's too strong. I mean, this is the first really strong beer we've had, you know. Yeah, that's, that's sure. That could be part of it too. I, it, it's not like well, you're talking aroma now. You, is what yeah, I'm just talking about the aroma right now. This, it's, I mean, it's not like glaringly too strong, but I think no. it is. No, this, this it's, that's it's that's what I would it. expect. What eight. number is this? Uh, entry eight. number eight. Yeah. Eight. I wouldn't be shocked if I cracked open a commercial Baltic Porter yeah, and smelled that. Yeah, that wouldn't be surprising at all. <laughs> You're gonna need a cigarette after that. Yeah. This is, uh, I mean, as far as what I'm tasting oh. and as far as that style goes, I'm pretty happy with the flavor. Yeah, it's good. I, I'm not 100% thrilled with the aroma. Like I think, like you described it earlier, uh, is about the best way to say it. If you crack this open, you wouldn't think you bought the wrong beer. Right. But no, you wouldn't go, oh, this is amazing what I'm supposed to smell when you open this. And so that generally, you can yeah, imagine, is going to lose a few points on the aroma. It's, it's good, but not great. Um, you get alcohol warmth in this. I was going to say, I can smell yeah. the ethanol now. I can smell yeah, it and the, I can taste it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the alcohol You can taste it, and as it there. warms up a little more, you can really, really taste and smell it. So. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, go ahead and taste it. So. Oh yeah, you've already tasted it. Yeah, the alcohol's really big on the palate. Oh, uh, see, inappropriate bottles. Uh, 20, 30 points off. Yeah, easy. I think easily that's we're in the negative range now. Uh, hopefully not. So. Well, I think the I think the malt profile and in, in the aroma is, is enough to really get them into the positives. That it might get like a two out of two. Two now they're yeah. gonna get to a two. You like the number two. I do like the number two. Uh, Crack number two was my favorite beer tonight, wasn't it? Okay. May have been. I'm not sure. Entry number two is the second beer we had. You mean the ESB? No, I liked the Munich. Yeah, that was a good one. This has been my favorite one so far. Okay. Um, the mouthfeel, let's talk about that. It's generally quite full-bodied and smooth with a well-aged alcohol warmth. Yeah, okay. I, I feel like this is about... You know, I, I was I was gonna ding it on the, the the alcohol in there, but after you read that, I guess it's. But I would this is, say this is, this is put. This isn't well aged. Warm, I would say though. not this well is aged. Like young That's heat. True. This yeah. is young. This is young heat. It's a bit vodka. -y. So uh, this basically, is, this is gonna be awesome in like six months. Basically, I think. that would be my biggest recommendation: was age yeah, it a little age more. Age it another six months, and this is gonna be fantastic. And you may not even need that much. It's not that far off of being. Really, good. really good. And some things you'll notice in the aroma where we're noticing more fruity esters. It may yield itself to a little better notes uh, by oxidizing a little bit, by actually getting a little older. Uh, you may. I'd get like to know what, what how old it is actually. That'd be that'd be interesting to. It it's got a really good carbonation, which makes you think that it's either somehow uh, you know, you're probably not bottle conditioned, it's probably yeah, kick yeah, conditioned, but you know the carbonation's big. Uh, it's good. It really brings out the flavors, and that's a good. You can. You're always going to be better off erring on the side of too much carbonation because you know, it'll bring out whatever flavors you have. I, w I want more malt in this beer. I think. Yeah. Um, I, got, I feel like I feel like the fruity esters are, are are too much. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's if it's a lack of malt or an excess of that that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, one, one or the, yeah. Yeah. That, that could be it out. Something's thinning it out. I, uh, I'm dinging the mouthfeel just for that. What's that? But the alcohol, the alcohol is too much. Warmth is, is big time. And I mean, I'm saying that the my sample. Uh, so you know, there's, there's, it's a, it calls oh, yeah. out well aged alcohol warmth, and this is not well aged. This is this is an early young beer. Let me see the style guidelines. How much roast are we supposed to be getting? It, it doesn't even mention it a whole lot, if at all. It's and the roast it, is supposed to be like a bigger beer version of like roasted. Beer. Yeah, okay. so it's not yeah, supposed I mean, to be an overboard it. roast. Okay. I mean, as far as the style guidelines goes, yeah. this hits pretty well Most down the points. The, it's, it's except close. I think, Bono, you're right. It's not as big as you would want malt wise, but you can tell it, it may have just over attenuated. Maybe it, why it, we're it getting some be, of that extra have, yeah. alcohol. It may have just gotten a really. It may have uh, fermented on a full moon. 
<laughs> Maybe the Solstice? Well, Necronox? Watch, watch our show and you, we did an entire episode. If you watched our show, you would know about yeah. Full Moon Beer. I'm not a fan. So. <laughs> well, you don't, Just like, you don't, you don't know good programming when you see it, sir. Well, I'm off of there. <laughs> Lots of dark fruit. As it warms up, it gets real fruity. Yeah, it does. But not like the estuary bad fruity, just like like right. dark malt fruit. Right. Yeah, it's not like fruity pebbles or something. No, no, no. I feel like I wanted to be higher than I ended up, but I I agree with the position I've got this beer in right now, so So by the way, when you get your score sheets out there. Uh, a lot of times people look at the scores and they try to figure out that their scores, oh, well, I got a 25. Well, if you get a 25 because you happen to be against five great beers that all were in the 40s. Yeah, so some, far all these been good. Sometimes that, you know, and what we've had tonight was every beer has been good. We're nitpicking because all the beers have been good. So when you have a night like that where all the beers are good, sometimes the scores are artificially lower because, and, and that's where I feel like we are tonight. Had we had a couple of bad beers, all these scores would be higher right now. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I love bad beer. It makes yeah. wedding so easy. But having bad beers gives you your base point. Oh, this is a 20, right? This is a 19. This You know where your bad beer is. I'm, I'm at 33. I'm at 35. I'm at 34. Right there. So I'm getting... What did you get, Kyle? 35. Oh, I forgot to write C video. Right. right on. Uh, I was at 34. 34. Yeah, we went 33, 34, 35. No, I was, yeah, so I was at 35. You were at 33. Oh, 34. What? <laughs> I was at 34. I don't know. Someone over 33, 35. <laughs> 33, 34, 35. Ching. Tag out. <laughs> oh. You can't tag out and then me still be in. I get it. <laughs> Now it is time that I've been I just want a high five. <laughs> I just want a high five. All right. I might just recite this style guideline from memory because it's time for English barley wine. It was very, yum, yum, very yum, 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 yum. It is going to be 19 B as in bitch slap. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. Oh. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. Didn't, didn't that guy die? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And another one's on, and another one's on. Right, another one rides the bus. Oh. I went to the rides the bus thing again. I'm going weird out with it. All right. Ham's barley wine. Aroma is very rich and strongly malty, often with a caramel-like aroma. May have moderate to strong fruitiness, often with a dried fruit character. English, English hop aroma may be ranged from mild to assertive. Alcohol aromatics may be low to moderate, but never harsh, hot, or solventy. The intensity of these aromatics often subsides with age. <coughs> The aroma may have a rich character, including bready, toasty, toffee, molasses, and or treacle notes. Aged versions may have a sherry-like quality, possibly venous or port-like aromatics, and generally more muted malt aromas, low to no diacetyl. Appearance color may range from rich gold to very dark amber or even dark brown. Often has ruby highlights, but should not be opaque. Low to moderate off-white head, may have low head retention. Maybe cloudy with chill haze at cooler temperatures, but generally clears to good to brilliant clarity as it warms. The color may appear to have great depth, as if viewed through a thick glass lens. High alcohol and viscosity may be visible in, quote, legs when beer is swirled in a glass. Flavor, strong, intense, complex, multi-layered malt flavors ranging from bready and biscuity through nutty, Deep toast, dark caramel toffee, and or molasses. Moderate to high malty sweetness on the palate, although the finish may be moderately sweet to moderately dry depending on aging. Some oxidative or venous flavors may be present, and often complex alcohol flavors should be evident. 
Alcohol flavors should not be harsh, halt, hot, or solventy. Moderate to fairly high fruitiness, often with a dried fruit character. Hop bitterness may range from just enough for balance to a firm presence. Balance therefore ranges from malty to somewhat bitter. Low to moderately high hop flavor. Low to no diacetyl. Mouthfeel is full bodied and chewy with a velvety, luscious texture, although the body may decline with long conditioning. A smooth warmth from aged alcohol should be present and should not be hot or harsh. Carbonation may be low to moderate depending on age and conditioning. Overall impression, the richest and strongest of the English ales, a showcase of malty richness and complex, intense flavors. The character of these ales can change significantly over time. Both young and old versions should be appreciated for what they are. The malt profile can vary widely. Not all examples will have all possible flavors or aromas. This is a big, wide range style. Um, you the, can have a the, whole bunch of different the key, flavors. The key here is complexity. Complexity. I mean, that's you, the, you, you, that's th it. this beer cannot be one-dimensional. That that is the backbone of an English barley wine. You've basically got to, when you taste it, you've got to be like, oh man, I get this. Oh, now I get this. Oh, and now I get this. And and every time you drink it, you may get a little bit different if that's the way it works. But sometimes, it, you know, it when it's on, oh man, this style, it's the best. But when it's off, it can go as far away from on as possible. Excuse me. I got a nice small amount of carbonation. This is not a style that really... Well, ding you for not having carbonation. In fact, sometimes quite the opposite. I think specifically says low to moderate carbonation. This is a uh, more carbonated than I expected. Carbonation may be low to moderate. It's all right. A higher carbonation is not going to ding this beer. You won't want much of this. You will lose a little bit on. There's two different categories. You can lose a little bit on carbonation, but having a big carbonation will gain you on so many other categories. Like I said, always shoot for more carbonation than less carbonation. So I'm smelling that, and I get um, I get a little cardboard note right yeah. out of the back. So, but that, that's acceptable. It's acceptable. Um, yeah, caramel corn. She, she smells caramel corn out there. Caramel corn, not necessarily a good thing, which will normally indicate buttery. I was gonna, I was gonna say I get butterscotch out of this. Buttery and butterscotch. Buttery and buttery butterscotch can be totally different. And butterscotch and a barley wine. I was thinking I get butterscotch. Caramel malt in it. Right. Or butterscotch is for caramel caramel. Butterscotch is okay. Yeah, butterscotch. Well, I think butterscotch is just. Buttered popcorn and caramel popcorn, I guess, is what we're talking about, right? Caramel corn. So that's different than buttered popcorn. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely. Still some candy stuff. I don't. There's definitely layers to this. The, the aroma certainly is not one-dimensional. It's like an ogre. <laughs> it, it, oh, it, it is like an ogre. Is apparently like an ogre. Is that the BJC Guidelines moderate ogreish? Um, I don't. It does not mention <laughs> how what level the ogre should be. All right. I think that sounds just about right. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> moderate low to moderate high. I, I feel like this is getting more cardboardy. Is it? Definitely got cardboardy flavors. Yeah. Uh, it's which means oxidation. So which is also probably a year old, maybe a year and a half. Yeah, it's it's probably an older beer, and this particular beer has started I mean, to get past its prime. Yeah. Which the, means the, yeah, the alcohol is like completely, completely mellowed. So it's yeah, muted. This is an old yeah. beer. It's very muted on the alcohol level, which if you're entering it as a barley wine. But it still has. The, I mean, it has still has good warmth to it. It's just not big warm. Yeah, it's just, it's just mellowed. And in a lot of cases, when you when you taste that beer, and so what what they're talking about is so, so you've got a mellowed alcohol flavor. So normally, when you're drinking a barley wine that is of substantial alcohol strength and it's the right age, and you're drinking it and everything's mellow, uh, just melding together the way it should be, it should be warm enough to where you don't want to take a big drink. This you can taste, you can take a pretty decent swig and it kind of washes away, which is generally a sign that now it's starting to ferment and attenuate out more fully, but the flavors are starting to, to go away because of the different bacteria that get in there through oxidation and through you know oxygen just getting in there and deadening the flavors. Um, there's more science to it than smarter people than I know, but in other words, me. 
Um, I mean, I get, I get the uh, caramel popcorn like you're talking about. You get the, yeah. the good caramel. There's big kettle caram in there. I mean, they they did a good yeah, job. Yeah, they, they kettle caram the bejesus. Caramelizing the sugar, and it's very complex as far as that goes. Um, that oxidation just it's enough to ding it. It's enough to ding it for sure. Ding it up, man. Mm-hmm. So, ding away. We basically we're gonna we're gonna have to. Uh, we want more beer with this. We want a bigger flavor, pretty much all around. The kettle carm well, and, and is that, the and only that, and that, com- that comes from the age, because as and and you and I tasted this in our English barley one in the garage. That as as it ages, that 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 big that the big body, that big flavor, you got like right right out of the right out of the primary. It, it, it ages out. Okay, so I'm going through mine right now. Um, the body is nice. Yep. Yeah. The body is it's a little too it's not as viscous or a little more viscous than I would like it to be. It's not quite as thick. And, and and again, yeah, no, that's that's from age. This yeah. was, this was probably unbelievable like three or four months ago. Right now, it's great, but I don't say great. I definitely don't say good, great. Good, good to great. Um, it's it's not it's it's terrible. Is is what is what it is. <laughs> no, Some, it's, somewhere between terrible and outstanding. It's just missing in pretty much every category. It's it's missing something in every category. Um, trying to get my numbers where I need them to be uh, because I, I did, I put my numbers down and they were a little bit lower than I expected them to be actually. Um, Oh God, that is awful. No, it is not awful. Yes, not. <laughs> not awful, Matt Robinson. Definitely not awful. That was him. <laughs> yeah, that, that was him. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we use okay, that sound drop on our show all the time. Good. I added. <laughs> and, and, and actually, Teddy, I don't know about you guys, but Teddy and I say that on a regular basis. We'll be at a restaurant and be like, oh, God, that is awful. I remember we were in the living room. What yeah, year was we that? were, it was uh, Goose Island. It was a Goose Island uh-huh. knockoff of an organic Goose Island beer that they made. And they, yeah. they bottled it under Goose Island, but they made some special label for it because it was so bad, but they wanted to sell it. <laughs> yeah. And it was just horrible. And we were all drinking, going, this is just awful. And then when you, you showed up late and we gave it to you after the show, and we, yes, we actually gave it to you on camera and you were drinking it. And you drank it and you go, Oh God, that is awful, and it was quite priceless. So, okay. I expect royalties. Yeah, expect away. Yeah, we'll, we'll give you seventy-five percent of our profit. <laughs> okay. You guys heard it. Where, where are you guys at? Thirty-one. I'm still working. I'm over here. I'm over here now, Sydney. Dang, I'm lower than a 31. I need a resident Australian here. I feel like when when I put my numbers down that I thought it was going to be, I was at a 25. Oh, shit, I'm at but a I don't, 30. I don't feel like I should be I at a 25. I didn't think I would be that low. But. So I bumped it to a 28 because I feel like it really, that's where it needed to be. I was no. looking for Man, a high 20s. Man, nailed this beer. What's that? Well, I guess, you, I guess you're only two points lower than me, but you had to fight to get there. No, I, I wanted to be there. But like I said, when I put it on there, it was like sometimes when I put all my numbers separate, they're exactly where I wanted to be, expected to be, and I expected to be in the high twenties, and I was in the mid twenties. It's not a mid twenties beer. It's definitely a high twenties beer to a low thirties beer. I can't get into the thirties just because I feel like it pretty much has like several of those things in there that you can't have with a beer, like the oxidation has passed its prime. Um, it's, it's too thin. It, it's it's one of the it's one of those things like carbonation where it's past its prime and that knocks everything. Yeah. Like undercarbonated knocks everything. Past yeah. his prime knocks everything. Yeah, with the barley wine, you, you want it to be there where it needs to be. All right. Now, if you put this in as an old ale, it'd be better. It'd be better, better, yeah. I don't yeah. think it'd be fantastic. I, I think yeah, you'd get in the mid 30s, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. And we always talk about the different styles you could enter it as. Although the oxidation characters could knock it, depending on your judges. Yeah. Less oxidation characters allowed in old ales, right? Am I right on that? Yes. Yes. Well, Okay, good. Somebody's you good. Mostly. <laughs> All right, two more guys. One more. Next one is English barley wine with Brett and Brettomyces 
yeast. What is is that yeast or is that a bacteria? Well, that is a yeast. It's, it's technically a yeast. It, it's it's yeast. It's it's absolutely a yeast. That, so it, it, this is going to impart sort of a... I don't know if that's true. Yes, Pertanomyces and Saccharomyces, the only two... Oh, excuse me, yeah, no, but Lactobacillus... Is a bacteria. Is a bacteria. I was going to... So it's Pediococcus. Right. Because uh, I was going to... Because the, you can tell just by how they grow, because like a Lactobacillus will grow like a mushroom on the top of a liquid, whereas uh, a yeast yeah. will... All right, let's pour the damn beer. Go through, but anyway. Yeah, bacteria has a pellicle. Mm-hmm. So bacteria has a pellicle. I don't think... Vanessa, yeast did you want some of those? Yeast only has a temporary pellicle. I'm All right, where's I'm the beer? into talking on my ass. Okay. Give me the beer. Bring beer. Wait, so what are What's we drinking? category? We're drinking an English, English barley, barley wine with bread. Oh, God. This is one of those beers where it's either going to be a home run or just a total Yeah, flop. this is, is going to be impossible to do <laughs> it, like in the middle. <laughs> well, it only kind of tastes like baby diaper. There you go. <laughs> but it tastes like a really rich baby's diaper, so that... <laughs> Wait, Rich isn't flavorful or Rich is an actual no, Rich high, is, high class baby? Rich is in our producer. <laughs> Another well carbonated beer, which is not necessarily what you expect. Dirty, dirty diapers definitely can be a something that people describe as uh, as bretomyces, although it's not correct, but people. <laughs> People often with disgust talk about bread. Like, people who don't like bread don't like bread. You're, you're this is a Vanessa, huge yeah, carbonation. Kind of a you're you're yeah, gonna taste the bread. Right well, I mean, off the it's bat, gonna be it, bread's gonna might, just eat up everything. Smell it, so. Ooh, that's nice. That's spicy. <laughs> <laughs> they, they call that smell. horse blanket. <laughs> or or horse semen, one of the two. <laughs> that I don't think they call it that. I don't know, Bono. How much horse semen have you had in your house? <laughs> Enough to know the difference. Uh, 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 well, he's also. Me. <laughs> <laughs> the horse. He didn't. He was just smelling it, man. He didn't say anything about the taste. I'll take horse semen for two thousand. <laughs> yeah, you I'll would take the rapist. <laughs> <laughs> Bob is the only one here who would take horse to- semen for two thousand. Hey, horse semen is probably really expensive. Good. Actually, did you know uh, bull semen is the most expensive liquid per gallon in the world? I like the aroma. Bull. <laughs> Boodoops. <laughs> the carbonation was there right off the bat. It kind of, the head completely went away. The bread is nice. It doesn't like overpower in the aroma. But. That's, uh, I mean, the bread is big and it should be because they announced it. Um, there's some caramel. There's some oxidation. There's some dark fruit behind it. I like the aroma a lot. I'm getting some weird in the smell. If I mean, I could use a little semen. bit less bread, but <laughs> if this is it's good. Semen, what, what, what are you going to do, Matt? What are you going to do with that horse? If this is horse Drink semen, it right right on, it's going to pour it all over I'm going to find the next field. Pour it all over his <laughs> face. I'm going to find a new job. So that no. anticipated pretty Are quickly. you going to be the backside of a horse costume for Halloween next year and just turn around backwards? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I gotta think about that for a second. Yeah, yeah. that means the head out the backside. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a, that was a, that was a intricate yeah. joke. I went way <laughs> beyond the state of inebriate, inebriotism. Yeah, that way. Okay. All right, so. <laughs> it's a little warm, but. It's a little, bad. it's big warm. It's a little young, uh, the exact opposite problem the last one. It's, um. You know, I want I want more out of the body of the beer. Yeah. To get to that barley wine style, but I like the flavors. I mean, it's the, the malt, the malt, the malt character. There's a weird smell I'm getting out of this. That, that could be it's probably like bread. Just behind the bread. Alcohols. So basically, you talk and like uh, like they're talking about out here. Yeah, a bread yeast will come oh, in there and eat sugars I mean, like that something else would not eat. Out of my so. <laughs> The bread no, like will cooking sherry. Yeah, yeah that's what's like I don't know. <laughs> the, well, all right, we'll yeah, get this, serious for a second. Really smells this, like this, is a, this is a beer we we need to judge, and we it's yeah, late yeah, in the judging. This one's so getting real good. We'll light. see. see yeah, it's it's says, a real good light. It says aged versions may have a sherry-like quality. Oh, but, and, okay, but, but at this point, we're we're a specialty beer, so you know we're entered under twenty-three. 
And Brent this should is, be the biggest character. This is pretty good. And and that's, that's normal. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the, the bread. bread. That's what that is. So Vanessa says it's got a sour smell to it. And Vanessa knows. Sometimes the most acute judges are those who have never judged before because they just Blur say what's on their mind. Yeah. And that's right. So what, what color is that head? Is that like a... It's nice. Uh, like khaki. Like dark khaki. Mm. Light khaki. <laughs> what, what? So it's, it's very spicy. <laughs> From that, the bread has has turned some of the darker fruit into like a, a spicy flavor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You guys catch that? Yeah, I have it's not tasted like a, it yet, but I'm, I'm sure you're correct. Got oh, some you haven't spice. tasted it? Oh, no, no, give yourself I'm, a taste, man. I'm running behind. I, I was here. wondering if that spice isn't from um, Noble Hop. I don't think it's from hops, man. You, you, you think it's gonna be from the bread? I think it is. It just the way it's coming in because it's too peppery. Noble Hops. I mean, this is like almost a rye peppery. If they had announced that it had rye in there, I would not be. Uh, you, uh, yeah, I would be saying you did a good job with the rye. So. So it's got this horse saddle flavor to it and the aroma to it. It's a little hot. It's hot. A little heartburning. But it's hot. But then again, I mean, it's, and, it's not it's not over. But hot. at no. the same time that it's hot, it's dry. And I think Brendan out there made a great observation. When you have that bread in there, you are going to dry out a beer. Right. Uh, like honestly, it's not that it's hot. It's, I can tell it's high alcohol because it is stripping my esophageal lining right now. Right. <laughs> but the actual taste in my mouth is not ethanol at all. No. It, yeah. Right. Right. You're like, mm, that's delicious. <laughs> it's it basically is giving him all of those reminiscence of all the times that he sniffed that? paint glue as a kid. <laughs> it's got kind of that lead paint, paint taste. I meant uh, paint and glue. <laughs> Golly, I'm like combining words. I'm just doing the shortcut <laughs> stuff, where instead of saying an entire sentence, I just put the two key words together and they're paint glue. I really think that spiciness is from like a noble hop, of some sort. It and that's be, okay, right? No, it shouldn't be Noble Hops. It should be, it well, should be it's, resiny. It's, it, should be, it should be UK varieties of hop. So it should be more... I think it's coming from the bread. bread. I totally agree. Because really, the only spicy, peppery hop is going to be that sauce. Um, yeah, that's, that's true. That's going to be super noticeable. Then, that, that's, and yeah, you, would, you, you know how much of that you'd have to put in there to a barley wine to be able to taste that? We would have a bitterness level beyond belief. Yeah, I guess it's got to be the bread then. Um, well, either way, and this is a this is a really good conversation. Either way, whether that comes from Noble Hops or whether that comes from Brett, you pretty much have to lean in the judging that it came from where they said it came from. Yeah, right? no, so I'm, this is a specialty. I'm, so, I'm okay with that. Yeah. yeah. So basically, because they said it's a specialty with Brett, and Brett has that character of being able to induce peppery, spicy type flavors, you have to assume that that's where it came from, and therefore that's a good thing. Now, if you were if you didn't announce Brett, you would say this is a really bad thing that it has pe peppery and spicy in it. Um, and I mean, I don't have too much to ding it on. Um, the, the heat is pushing it. it it's like, I'm, a little. Yeah. It, it's not enough to kill it, but it's pushing it. That but is, I don't taste it though. I don't taste. Yeah, you don't taste alcohol. the heat. It's just you, a little warm. Which I guess is you you, to have. you smell the warmth, you taste the warmth, you, you feel the heat, but. I mean, uh, that, that's not enough to kill it. No, no, no. That, that's, that's not more than a couple points, I don't think. It is alcoholic enough for the contents of the cup to be actively changing my opinion of the contents as we speak. <laughs> you mean as we drink? <laughs> right. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? What did I tell you? <laughs> Good lord, man. What did you do? He, he threw, threw it all over Bono. <laughs> he threw his horse semen all over the place. <laughs> There's more horse semen if you'd like it. No, oh, no, I got a mouthful already. <laughs> <laughs> Ten extra bonus points for anyone that can actually come up with the name of the profession for the people who uh, harvest said product. You used to do that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Just because well, he went to Texas Tech doesn't mean he artificially whacked off horses for. Yes, he did. He artificially inseminated horses. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I well, he said, yeah, because I thought I'm the, the tech. That's I one of the, the classes. I thought out in the panhandle that was cattle. Did you really? You got no, but he was doing cattle. it for no, uh, we, help. We, we didn't have science. science. We did, like, uh, yeah. He got horses out of trouble, like the guy in Miami. He horses and did cloning. 
Uh, wow. I knew I was going to give this a good score. I'm, I'm in surprised by my scores tonight. Beers that I thought were great, I ended up giving like 30 and 31. Right. I'm surprised at how much beer you spilled so on your score sheet. I know. I'm, I'm a mess. a profession that jerks off horses. Am I going to get yeah, some, some good videos? Ask, ask Siri. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, going to Cancun here in a few weeks. So if anybody wants to. Do, do they do the horse donkey show down there? Yeah, or? watch the cornhole. Watch the call. Okay. You can participate. If you announce that you're Cuban, you get to participate. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, they'll dress you like a donkey. <laughs> you can either be the donkey or the... Uh, or the horse. You know. The horse. <laughs> you know. We, we all know, Matt. Just say it. What? Oh, no, that Matt. Yeah. What, puppy? Um, what, what number is this? Four? <laughs> that is hot. Yeah, it, it's hot, but... <laughs> That's. But I mean, I mean that that ding like that ding's a mouthfeel I mean, and nothing it's else. A lot of these, right? Even higher than that. I got what I got. Waiting on uh, Matt No Hat yeah, to tell I'm us what slow. he's got. I'm slow here. The malt balance pretty good. That's okay, the right? Yeah. I definitely get a little smoky. I mean, it's just the the bread, smoky, spicy. I mean, the bread is big time. The bread is really. I've, I've had some English barley wines that I've tried to use bread, and it was just terrible, like just awful, awful stuff. But th this is really nice. Yeah, the, the sourness actually kind of complimented the beer rather than just yeah, overpowering. Yeah, it, yes. it really did. And I was concerned, but they, they did a great job with it. Well, and it's not sourness. You don't really get a sourness from bread. Yeah, and that's the the, the English barley wine I had that had bread. Like it, it just. It tasted like a Berliner Weiss with, with a malty backbone or something. Like, it's pretty you think it'll get more sour? Oh yeah, Brett can turn pretty sour. Maybe maybe that's what I had. Maybe it was not just lactic too old, but sour though. I mean, not nearly what you would get out of a. No, it's no not, not like vinegary. Like a, like it, it's not going to be acetic. It's going to be. I'm trying to think of a good. That's probably, I would, I would give give a good example of the kind of sour. Why don't you think of a good score to write down? You know, that's, that's only four to six is it? Um, that's, that's that's pure, uh, a good like bread one then. Um, and to me, like I love like sour levels. Like you have to be big time sour for me to be able to go. Yeah, that's got some sour to it. That's yeah, sour. It's it pretty sour. That's all bread. I know what you're talking about, and it's not. It, it's not really an acetic type sour. And they were saying an Orval, right? Um, and that that's a darker. Uh, the Orval's not dark. No, it's, uh, it's lighter than this. Yeah, it's lighter. It's a it's a Belgian pale. Uh, it's, it's, the one in, it's the one in the little funky bottle. I've the had bowling, the yeah, the it's, got the, it's got the fish with the ring and shit. I got a thirty six. Thirty nine. I got a forty. Oh man, I'm a bit low. I mean, we're within four. Yeah, we're, we're we're good, man. Well, we'll call it good right now, but we're definitely gonna have to yeah, fight over. Yeah, that might. We, this come and the Dunkel. This and the Dunkel are get, right there. Uh, I did thirty nine. Kyle the last did 40, one. And Matt we have one more. Did one more. Six. Four, 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 right now, one and two. Judge this one. You judge mm -hmm. this one. Right I can't. Now? I can't. Vanessa, you want to judge this one? Guess judge. Guess judge. <laughs> no. You don't. You don't have to be on camera. You can judge Bradley's from your seat. All right. I'm All right. Ready. You're in. All right. Okay. What, what's what's our category on this, Matt? Okay. This is a cider, so you need to look at your cider guidelines and look at this cider sheets. What's that? We get to the cider sheets. Nice. Your bitch. I know. That's why I turned on the AC <laughs> earlier. Just All right. Name. Is this fruit cider, apple? I wine? forgot to write C video on that one. Standard cider, common cider, but what are we looking oh, at? Cider. Spiced cider. Is a specialty cider. Uh, yeah. Specialty yeah. cider. Yeah. Other specialty. 28 D. D as in Dick Munchie. Cider sheet. Uh, oh, I need to write a new sheet. sheet. Cider sheet. Now on this one, uh, this is new for us. I am not a recognized uh, judge of ciders. So. You are. BJCP made you recognize some ciders. Okay, uh, on this, the cider, you have to say whether it's the carbonation level and the sweetness. This one was noted in still, which yeah. means it has no carbonation, and it's dry, so it shouldn't be sweet. Look at a lunch. Are there a variety of apples? No. But it is apple cider? 
No, it's Are there any specialty ingredients? Yes, it is spice with cinnamon, allspice, nutmeg, cloves, and Orfield. Yikes. I'll just put pumpkin pie spice. <laughs> How do you spell cinnamon? C, U, S, I, N, N, I don't think I added two W's so, there. So what, cinnamon, doing. nutmeg? Cinnamon, allspice, nutmeg, cloves, and Orfield. It's pumpkin pie spice. Yeah. And if you look at special, you don't have to say variety of apple. On here, it's a safety clear. As long as that's why he asked. Player. That's why he asked. What category is this? He's a like sophomore in college and undeclared. What? So still and dry? Still and dry. Company. Or it's a graduate of college D. from the what college of business. <laughs> What entry is this? This is entry number. My, three. my wife is always really mad when I say that because she graduated business. Entry number three. Entry number three. And this is 28B of the style guidelines. Oh, can you write it down? You're going to give us the cider? Are you going to read the style guidelines? I guess, if you insist. I'll read, read it. all the other ones out. This is an open ended category for cider or perry with other adjuncts, such that it does not fit any of the categories above. This includes the use of spices and or other sweeteners. A cider with added honey may be entered here if the cider character remains dominant. Otherwise, it should be entered as mead. Aroma and flavor. The cider character must always be present and must fit with adjuncts. Appearance clear to brilliant. Color should be that of a common cider, unless adjuncts are expected to contribute color. Mouthfeel. Average body may show tannic, astringent, or heavy body, as determined by adjuncts. Should we look at common cider? No, we're good. Uh, yeah, yeah, color-wise, color really ask. Color should be that of a common cider, so color... Should be clear to brilliant, pale to medium gold. I don't know why they couldn't just say pale to medium gold. So what are we it, looking it, for? It required so much extra. Uh, it, it, it required more letters they to would have say. Had to skip over to the second. Color should be that of a common cider, unless uh, anyway. <laughs> All right. So basically, what are we looking for here, Bono? We're we're looking for cider. It, it's almost, it's almost like a specialty beer. We're we're looking for a. a like a, a harmony of, of cider and specialty ingredients. Okay, and the a cider being different from a, uh, a beer. Apples. Why? Is cider different from beer? Yes, it is. It's, it's going to be made from apples. So, it's going to be very apple-y. So, <laughs> I don't know what you're asking. That's basically what I'm trying to get you to explain to people what the hell the difference is between All right. a cider and beer a beer. Beer is made with grain. Okay. And cider is made with apples. It is a scent, it, it's almost like wine, only it's made with apples instead of grapes. And it's so not as strong. It's a fruit. And it's going to be dry. Uh, ciders. This one's going to be dry, though. They technically, do, do they differentiate between a peri and a cider? Peri is made with pears. Yeah. Right. Okay. Actually, but in, in this particular category, you can, it's especially cider or peri. So it could be either one, and they didn't call it. Um, they, 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 they still called it a cider. They called this still? It is not still. That is not still at all. No, that would not be still. It's, a, it's about as still as somebody with... I'm, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> Did you Michael J. Fox a joke? I was going to say. <laughs> Whoa, who, who thought of saying that? That's messed up. I don't know. I'm shaky tonight. Um, you guys are so twisted. So the carbonation level, we're going to ding that, right? Cause yeah. It's, yep. it's supposed to be still, still, but it's Michael J. Fox. Jesus. That's so rude. <laughs> How's the Claire? How's the Claire? The Claire? You uh, have slight haze. You have no, no word clarity. It's slight haze. It's slight haze. <laughs> so the clarity gets knocked back one. It's a nice color. It's a, it's a really nice color. It's almost like the color of apple juice. Yeah, about straw yellow. I get a you know an alcohol smell. Um, definitely. Can we double, Matt? Can we double check that this is supposed to be still? I just did. Oh, okay, good. This is pretty, pretty carbonated. It's really carbonated. I have a feeling they grabbed the wrong bottle. They may have. Yeah, that's quite possible. I mean, there's no way they actually grab the counterpoint chiller. Still, still <laughs> you know, build up and... <laughs> it could have been still fermenting in the bottle a little bit. 
So what do you guys get in the aroma? I get alcohol, you know, that slight apple character. It's just mild al apple character, I would say. Um, I don't get a lot of those uh, spices. Yeah, I'd, well, I feel like there's a, li a, a little bit of the... The allspice. I mean, they're, they're some cinnamon. I can definitely I can smell, I can smell the cinnamon. cinnamon. No, I can I smell know. a little bit of the allspice. So I guess it's there. No, I don't. I don't get any of the. Yeah, orange. but it, it's it's not overpowering, but it's there. So we got those two things going there. So bouquet and the aroma. I, you know how much how much alcohol is allowed in a cider? I mean, are you supposed to smell that much alcohol? Uh, that's something. Five, five to twelve percent. But does it mention well, that well, how well, much well, alcohol you're supposed well, to smell? Well, on the common ciders, it's uh, sweet to low alcohol. What did you say? On common ciders, it's sweet to low alcohol. For what? On the aroma. Okay. So basically, I feel like it may be a little uh, heavy on the alcohol then. For this, but, but uh, I mean, it, it, it says 5 to 12%. You can't have a 12% alcohol cider without tasting it. So I, I the, the only the only thing it says I mean, the only thing it place it calls out common cider is appearance. I think that just about anything's going to go as as far as alcohol warmth. So you got you got to look through these, okay, and and see if alcohol warmth is allowed in any of them. Cider character must always be present. There's definitely cider character. Yeah, there. cider character is definitely there. That flavor is awesome. Yeah, it's a really, really good flavor. It's, I mean, this is... Yeah, I mean... Yeah, it's, see, to me, the, to, to me, the spices are overpowering. Really? I think spices are too much. You know, see, like, to me, in the bouquet, in the aroma, it was that I wanted a little more, but you can smell them all, you can pick them apart, so I'm good with the aroma. And then in the flavor, I got more. I got yeah. more than strong, I got in the aroma. Strong alcohol is allowed in New England cider, so we can't ding it. Okay. And then, um, though it's saying that, uh... This includes the use of spices, or so the appearance of comments, uh, mouthfeel. Well, and I mean, the so, spices are definitely there. I don't feel like they're a like they're a gut punch. The so the question at this point to me, uh, as far as never having judged a cider before, you're saying that the that the spices are more than you like, but does that take it out of style? Is that bad? Um, do you want less or is less appropriate? I feel that more is not always better. And I, I mean, thought you were an American. Man, I'm, I'm wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, Connie. If some is good, more is better. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it. Take well, they, they got to take a little bit more off of carbonation here. Yeah. Yeah. On the flavor, um, the alcohol strength. It's really carbonation. They don't have a mouthfeel section. Yeah. The acidity. balance of acidity. I don't feel like I don't get over acidic or anything like that. Balance no. of acidity, sweetness, strength, body, and carbonation is fourteen points. I mean, you've got to hammer them on carbonation on this. Yeah. So, like the. Because it, it like fourteen year points is that it's, balance? It's, it's, that's two and a half points. Ahead of time, it's, you declare that. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think they grabbed the wrong bottle. Yeah, it's only like three points a piece. Of each. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Three three points there, two points above. So I mean that that knocks them five points right there, right off the bat. And probably you got to hit it a point in overall impression too. It is dry. It is very dry. Balance of the city is good. The sweetness is right. The alcohol strength is good. I feel like the body's good. Um, it says other ingredients as appropriate. I feel like 
they're well used. I, I can't knock anything on this. I feel like it's a v- I, overall I think they're, I think they're tasty pushing cider. it, but I, I don't think that... To me, to declare as many things as they did, yeah, we gotta it get, better get have some it. power to it. Like, yeah. If you're going to declare just cinnamon, you don't have to go huge with cinnamon. You just have to have some cinnamon right. character. But if you're going to declare cinnamon, allspice, nutmeg, all clove, be there and, and, and you, orange peel... And you've got to be able to differentiate them all. Yeah, and I can. I mean, I get a little of that orange peel there in the flavor more than I did yeah, the aroma. It, it's up front. It's there. So I'm good with with that there. I like that there. Yeah, I would, I would drink this for sure. Drinkability. Yeah, it's all you know. Work. And let's think about this to the other beers we've judged tonight. And where it stands, to me, this is in the top three. Yeah. It's definitely in the top three. So, yeah, whatever we end up getting here, we're going to have to take these top three and we're going to have to look at them. Because there's enough here to ding this one to where I don't think it's going to get to where those – I mean, we've got this, a couple this of beers. This isn't going to compare with the bread or the donkel. You don't think so? No. Okay. And we're going to have to, That's I what think. We're do. So, That's what I had to create <laughs> good there and be, because it it would if they had declared it to be sparkling but they didn't well it, but that takes out that 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 takes out about six points but yeah six <laughs> points on <laughs> what i gave it would put it up yeah, there as <laughs> top three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, maybe top two. I'm stuck my face in this. That reminds yeah. me of college. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, 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 well, six points is a lot. Six points. I agree. I, uh, I'm lower than you. I'm 30. Well, I'll look for Kyle Fenner. Taste, right? Smells wow. Smells Smells I'm at 39. <laughs> I'm at, wow. Wow. <laughs> I've got to, I've got to come up. It sounds like James Roden or like you know. But see, I so you would have gone forty five if this thing was. So 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 if you're giving it six more points, I don't. If they they said it was sparkling and dry and spice, you would give this a forty six. Not necessarily. I I mean I'm saying that you you definitely can ding it six points for those things that were dinged. There were other things that I took away from it. And I may, I don't think I would have gone, I, I if can, this was not, if this was carbonated lowly, like they said, and everything was still good, I would have probably given it into the low 40s. I, I, can, I can get up to 34. I, can, I can't go to 39. And I just, I close felt enough. like the flavor yeah, was close fantastic. I, I really like it. The, the flavor, flavor is really, really nice. So I gave it a, I gave it a 20 out of 24 on the flavor. I mean, I, I, could, I could drink this. I, I could. But I've never judged a cider, so I could be way off on this. I, I really, I'm, I'm with him, man. I mean, it, it, if they had declared it sparkling, I think that would have been a top, top three beer easily. So where does that put us, Matt? Uh, put you the winner. Yeah, I guess it, it probably is still top but three. I'd say the, the cider's probably it's not my top bronze. three, but I think it's in, it's in the group's top three. But there's another beer that was. Uh, which one was that one that was pretty decent too? I don't think. I think we had the Munich. Pretty, pretty far. We had the Munich. I think and the those bread, three. And that was about it. The Munich, the Brett, and, and the, the cider. cider were definitely... And that cider surprised me. I liked that. They were definitely better than the rest of the pack, and I thought the pack was pretty good. Yeah. There were no bad beers tonight. No. There were only, you know, different variations of There were of style. mediocre beers. There were beers that were out of style, but nothing that you could right really call you bad. All right, so Matt's adding up the scores right now. We're going to compare what we've got. Um, your top three. Top three beers, slash ciders. Uh, the Munich Dunkel, the English, English Barley Wine Brand, and the Cider. What, what's, what are the scores on the Munich and the, dunk, and the um, Barley Wine? The Barley Wine uh, tallied was 115. Okay. Munich Dunkel was 106. And the Spice Cider was 108. Wow. I, I would say... Based on the judges' perceptions and based on everything, um, I think the scores. You know what? I added incorrectly. <laughs> I wouldn't think that because I thought we had thought we had more, 117 or so for the 
Uh, so there are 106 on both of them, on the Munich Dunkel and the Spice Center. And I judged it the highest, and I'm I'm going to say if I have to compare the two, I'm going to go the Dunkel higher than the cider, like yeah. just me, and I'm the one that's probably tipping the scales of the cider to the top. So I'm definitely going to say that Dunkel was better than. I the thought cider. the Dunkel would be best of show. I really did. I but no, I definitely I, I definitely thought that the barley wine with Brett was the best. Let's try them side by side. Do we let's have more just, of them? Just throw many best of show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. pull up nine glass or. Well, okay, well, do you all agree that the fire was three? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If, 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 they, if they declare sparkling, that's number one or two, it, but, it, but they don't. It was like a big kick in the teeth, right? When yeah. You, when you take something like that and you declare it wrong. And, and it, it sucks. Like, I hate to do it. Because that was an amazing cider. But yeah. I, I can't give so, one or two on it. Cider enterer, declare that sparkling, and you got a, a just fantastic Wait, did, did you want? Did you want to finish off the coffee? Is this the sign? Oh, uh, that's a yes. Mm. What? What's the number on the coffee? Oh, uh, yes. oh. Yikes. It's number one. Seven. <laughs> number seven in the entries, but number one in her heart. Okay. Uh, oh well, I hope you had fun. What numbers we got? Dunkel. You, you, you should you should come up and uh, judge the blue bonnet this March or eight, February, June, whenever that's going to be. Judge in March. Wow. It might be in August. I don't know. I want to have this with my cereal in the morning. They have. Yeah, that, that's actually that. what I wrote in the overall impression. I, I said um, this would be awesome with pancakes. Like French toast. <laughs> 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 you could do like breakfast for dinner. Do French toast and some coffee. All right. This is Munich Dunkel. <laughs> number four. Yes. Right. Number four is English barley. Well, you got the dregs. Nice There's not much left. Nice to meet you too. I remember what it tastes like. See you later. Bye, Bye, Bye. Nice to meet you. I'll, I'll see you in a little bit. I think we should do the other one first, by the way. Just because of what they are. Number four, I already know which one I like. Number two is the double. Man, I'm, I'm an English barley wine fiend, and, and maybe that's. Part of my judgment because I really think this Munich Dunkel is, is better. Well, and I, yeah, I mean, you may be. We're going to the Dunkel first, by the way. That's yeah. what I was I'm going to the Bali one first because I already already drank some of it. Yeah. It doesn't smell as good this one's when it's warmed up, does it? Definitely more. Uh, I get a lot of it, just a lot of toasty bread. I mean, yeah, yeah toasty bread. A lot of. And that was what you're supposed to get out of that. Right. <laughs> it's a good beer. I like it. I like it better. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this is... This is number one? I'm putting in my tally. Is this number one? Which one? The Dunkel. Yeah. That's better than most Dunkels that come here from Germany. I mean, because of the boat ride. Hey, someone likes their own hair. Drive the boxy. Still on. I got jumpers. It's all right. I don't. I gotta leave. <laughs> That's a good dunkle. Yeah, it it's is. a really good dunkle. It's a good one. And if you got to talk about it, I mean, let's just discuss through it. The dunkle has a few minor flaws, and that would be like maybe slightly too chocolatey. Maybe a little too chocolatey. Maybe and a it's little a maybe. Too sweet. Maybe a little bit too. Maybe sweet. too sweet. Maybe too chocolatey. And those are the big the bread is like. The, the problems with this beer is it's too alcoholic, is, is yeah, one of them. It's young is the only problem. It's very young. And so... It, it yeah, I'm is, not sure if I didn't get any any oxidation in that or if it was just the bread overpowering any oxidation. No, there's... It, it's, there's and it's chewy. There's little no, to no oxidation. It's hard like, for us to drink that because it's... Yeah, you got the drag, which is kind of unfortunate. But I already knew before I even came up here that I liked that Dunkel better. I'm good with that. I'm good with the Dunkel. I'm good with, you know, yeah, I, I, I was so I was, close. I've, I think been, I was 39 and 39 on both of mine. I've been, 39 and 40. I've been leaning towards the Dunkel all night. Yeah, yeah. we get we give the Dunkel number one. And that, for those of you was, watching out there, this was, was a the, tough, tough call. This was call. a tough call. Yeah, those were a lot of good beers. Yeah, you, usually, so Dunkel usually is number you one. the two beers side uh, by side the, at the end of the night. Right, Probably wise number two. Oh, yeah, this one was really Cider's good. Yeah. Three. Even driving side by side, 
or even like the top three are just way out in front of the pack. But this one, it was you know, it was pretty staggered. I, everything yeah. was between thirty and forty. Right. I think the the Dunkel and the barley wine definitely set themselves apart from the pack. Yeah. 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 I thought the cider was really good, except that when you declare stuff wrong. You know, I like I said, dinged. I I put the numbers too high, and it really should have probably been dinged to uh, mid thirties for my score. Well, but. and if if you declare something like that, well, I don't. In a beer, it might be different, but because carbonation shows up in the appearance and in the flavor, and like, like you, you, have, you actually it actually calls like carbonation in, in the flavor profile of the cider score sheet. So, you, and, and then you're going to get hit twice there, and then you're going to get hit again in overall impression. So, I mean, that, that just killed it. Yeah. Plus, you've got the whether or not you like it stuff. Right. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't judge that one. I'm not a big fan of spice stuff, so I'm glad I didn't judge that one. Yeah, oh yeah. Yes, I think you don't want to kill out the carbonation. The carbonation helped it. I think if it was flatter, the spices would have kind of overtaken it, and what, you wouldn't have was, smelled that. What was number one? Uh, entry number one, you mean? Yeah. What was entry one? I actually didn't try that. I'm interested. You know that one. Well, we got one, two, and three. Think... <laughs> this is just for shits and giggles. Schnitzel giggles. Schnitzel giggles. Yeah, you, 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 you say chocolatey. Damn, I thought it was good.